I heard that you just got an Android-based emulation handheld. Well, congratulations. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Tech Tweeb, how do you set these things up the way that you do? And also, why are you so cool? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly how I set these things up the way that I do, so you won't have to wonder about that. And maybe, just maybe, you'll pick up some tips of how to be cool along the way. Hello, hi there, I'm TechTweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video today. We are here to talk about setting up Android handhelds, and our test subject is going to be the famous RP2S, but this guide will apply to any Android based emulation device. And today I'm going to show you exactly what I did to set this up the way that I did, and then you'll know, so you can stop asking me how I do it. And if you have a different Android-based emulation device, the principle is the same. This, me this method is the method that I use. This Retroid Pocket 2S was given to me by the fine folks over at Go Game Geek. They sell this, so if you want one, you can buy it from them. There's a link in the description below. So uh, in your uh, Retroid box, you'll get a little uh, word paper with uh, some words on there that tell you about some stuff. And then you'll get the device itself. You'll get a high quality uh, USB-C cable and nothing else. All right, well, that's that. Let me zoom my camera in there. Yeah, this is gonna be a lot better. You'll be able to see what I'm doing. All right, we're going to start. Uh, we're going to go through the setup wizard here. English language. Connect to the internet. This is going to be important because we want to check for updates. All right, uh, let's go with that one. One, two, three, four, five. That's the stupidest combination I ever heard in my life. All right, so uh, we're connected there. Let's go back. Uh, you could say your time zone there. All right, now this is where you're going to select the apps that are pre-installed. None of this is uh, final. You can always install your own apps one at a time later if you want to do that. I'm going to go through and just choose the ones that I want installed. Citra is for 3DS. Dig is the front end that we're going to be using here today. So uh, we'll definitely install that. Uh, the two versions of Dolphin, you might as well install both of those, although there is a third that I do recommend, and I'll explain that later. Duck Station is a standalone PlayStation emulator, which you can use, and it works really good. Flycast is for uh, Dreamcast. M64 Plus FZ, that's for Nintendo 64. We definitely want PPS as PP for our PlayStation games. Uh, Redream is a uh, second Dreamcast emulator. Uh, RetroArch, we are going to stick mostly with the 64-bit version of RetroArch, which they give you right here. Yaba Senshiro 2 is uh, Sega Saturn. Aether SX2 is for PlayStation 2, so you'll definitely want that. I'm going to install the 32-bit version of RetroArch. However, we're mostly going to be sticking to the 64-bit version. The only time you'll ever need to go into the 32-bit version is if there's sort of maybe a compatibility issue and you need access to more cores. There's more cores in the 32-bit version. It looks like I'm installing about half of the standalone apps that it comes with. All right, so now it's uh, asking us which launcher we're going to be using. The RP2S launcher is the Retroid's uh, front end. That's uh, how they like you to organize your games on this device. Uh, we're not going to be using the default launcher. We're going to be setting up our own launcher. I'm going to be showing you how to set up Dig because that's the launcher that I like. So we're going to stick with this AOSP launcher, which is just a more standard Android experience. It'll sort of look like a phone. All right, the, the first and most important thing that we need to do before anything else is go onto the internet and download a new desktop wallpaper. There we go, that's uh, starting to feel a little more like home. So before anything else, we're going to uh, go into the Android settings. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom. Uh, down here, we're gonna go into system and then advanced, and we're gonna check for an update before we get too far along here. No update, so I am up to date. That's good. So uh, your device will come with a certain amount of storage on there. And you can store your ROMs on your device. There's no reason you need to use an SD card. Unless you don't have enough space on your device. Or 
if you want to have your ROMs on a SD card that you can move to another device at some point in the future. That's something that I like to do. So I'm going to be adding an SD card to this. I have a brand new SD card right over here. Yeah, you can use a SD card of any size. I guess I'd recommend maybe a 256. No reason to go up so big, unless you just want to have lots and lots of games. This here is a silicon power uh, SD card. This is a brand that I really like. I think they are a really, really solid bang for the buck. If you want this specific card or a variation of this, I'll include a link in the description below. You could grab this exact card into the SD card slot. There we go. If we pull down from the top here, you should be able to look through and see that there's a notification to set up the SD card. So go ahead and tap on that and it'll ask you how you want to set it up. Do you want to use it for extra handheld console storage or portable storage? If you use it as portable storage, you'll be able to take that SD card between different devices and be able to read it on those. That's what I like to do and that's what I'm going to do here. All right, so our SD card is now uh, initialized so it can be read by this device. Let's go ahead and copy some games over to our SD card. You can either do this by plugging your device into your computer, uh, but I'm just going to remove the SD card and copy the files onto the SD card with an SD card reader. Oh, and by the way, the uh, SD card reader that I use is this one here. It could, these things are, are super cheap. I'll include a link to this in the description below if you, if you want this specific reader. But I, I just recommend everybody get a good SD card reader because losing data sucks. Okay, so let's go plug this into the PC and uh, copy over some games, shall we? All right, so uh, when I insert my SD card, I am greeted by all of the folders that are on this SD card. Now, these are just made by Android. You don't have to put anything in any of these folders. We're gonna create our own folder for our ROMs. And I can start copying over my ROM libraries. You can organize this however you want. It doesn't matter what these folders are actually named since we're gonna be adding these ourselves. So you can just organize this however you want. Add your own ROM libraries. Uh, do not ask me where to find ROMs. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that. You just got to look yourself. Sorry. Uh, you might also want to create a BIOS folder and put your BIOS files in there. Uh, these are oftentimes optional. Uh, you can kind of just do it on a per system basis. If you load up a system and it doesn't load, you might be missing a BIOS file. So let's just go through uh, without any BIOS file setup or anything. And we'll just copy over any that come up if we need them. So with our ROMs on there, all that out of the way, let's, uh, yeah, let's uh, eject this safely from our computer and plug it back into our RP2S. And now we're ready to continue. So uh, the first thing that I re recommend you do before anything else is we're going to completely set up RetroArch because it's way easier just to get RetroArch completely set up first before we go messing around with any front ends or even trying any games. So go ahead and try and find the 64-bit uh, version of RetroArch. Now here it's going to ask for uh, a permission. You can say it's allowed. It's going to go through a little bit of an initial setup. And there, once it's done, it'll look kind of normal. So we're, now we're going to go through and uh, let, let's start by downloading all the cores that we're going to need. Go into Online Updater, Core Downloader, and this will be a list of every potential core that you can install. If you're not sure which one you need, go ahead and install everything. Now for Arcade, you're going to need the core that corresponds to the ROM set that you have on here. Arcade is kind of a special system where you need a specific core for the ROMs that you have. I highly recommend you get yourself a Final Burn Neo ROM set. That is probably the most easy to deal with type of arcade ROM set that you can find. Uh, for systems like NES or whatever, uh, there will be multiple cores listed. You can stick with one core, but I just like to download all of them because every now and then you'll come across a game that runs better in one or has better compatibility or something. And these cores are tiny. There's no reason you can't just download basically everything you could ever need. So that is all the cores that we need. So we're gonna back out to the main menu and we're gonna go over to the settings. That's right there, the little gear. 
And we're gonna set all the settings that we need for RetroArch right now so that we don't need to worry about changing anything later. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn off the on-screen overlay. That's where it shows the buttons on the screen, which we don't want because we have physical buttons uh, locked and loaded. The next thing I'm gonna do is uh, change the uh, color scheme of my menu. That's one thing I like to do. That's in user interface, appearance, and menu color theme. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good one. Now we're gonna set up our hotkeys, which is a very important thing that we need to do. So that's under input, and then you go down to hotkeys. And in here, I like to disable confirm quit. I like to set a menu controller combo to L3 and R3. So you push those in to get the menu up. And we're not gonna set a quit controller combo because we're gonna do that with the hotkey. So the hotkey is gonna be the select button. So now we're gonna go through and set up each hotkey that we want. I'm gonna put a diagram on the screen and you can set these hotkeys to be uh, the way that I have it, or you can pick your own layout if you prefer that. And then uh, one other thing that you might wanna do is uh, set up your retro achievements. So you can go to the achievements section, turn that on. You put your username and password. I'm not gonna tell you how to uh, set up retro achievements. You can figure that out yourself. This is where you do that and uh, turn hardcore mode on or off if you, uh, if you want that. Uh, another important thing that I like to do is to set it so it automatically saves your game whenever you exit RetroArch, uh, and then it automatically loads your game whenever you get back into that game. You don't have to use that feature, but it's something that I like. So that's under the saving menu, and you go down here to auto save state and load state automatically. And that's pretty much it. That's all the settings that I personally use. Uh, so now we're going to back out to the main menu. We're going to go down to configuration file and we're going to select save current configuration. And this will make it so that whenever RetroArch is loaded from an external game launcher, it will load these settings. So let's go ahead and fire up our launcher. Now you can use the Retroid launcher or you can use a different launcher like Daijisho. Lots of people like that one. It's a good launcher. My favorite launcher that I'm gonna be using and the one that I'm gonna show you how I set up is this one right here. It's called Dig. And one of the reasons why I like Dig is because it um, will scan your entire ROMs directory all by itself and it'll automatically organize your games for you. You don't have to do like folder by folder by folder. So let's do that now. We're gonna click OK here. We're gonna choose which folder we want. Select a folder. Then you're gonna choose your SD card, which uh, will be a weird name like that. Now you're gonna select your ROMs folder that you made. There's our ROMs folder and it has all our games that we added on there. I'm gonna click confirm. And then it's gonna go through and scan that whole folder and add each of those games and organize it under the systems here. Yeah, it's actually working right now. You see this little gear here, you can tap that and it'll tell you uh, what the progress is. Uh, it's actually going to go through and add all your games, organize them by your system, and then it's gonna go through and download all of the box art and all of the screenshots all by itself. It's gonna completely basically set itself up for you. While this is scanning, let's go ahead and choose a different front end for Dig because there are lots of different front ends to choose from and you can make it look different, however you like it. So the, the front ends, if you back out to the main menu, go down to options, then go down to themes. And in here, there is a browse themes option. So go ahead and tap browse themes. And these are all the different themes that you can install onto your, uh, onto Dig. Now there's a glitch in Dig where you ordinarily should be able to tap that and it will download to your device. But as you'll see, if I tap that, nothing happens. So what I do here is I just uh, copy the URL and then you can jump over to Google Chrome or whatever and just go to directly to that URL and then it'll ask you to download it. And you could just download it the way you would download any other zip file. So now we'll go back over to Dig under themes now we need to install the theme that we just downloaded. So click install theme and we are gonna go to the downloads folder on our actual uh, device storage. 
and there it is alec full nx that's the theme i downloaded click confirm it'll go through and now we can select that theme from the little list of themes hey look at that not bad so let's go into the systems and see how the rom scanning is doing uh we have lots of systems here if i go into my game boy games look at that it's got all the the box art scraped for all my games already very cool so uh let's fire up a game uh but before that we uh there's something special that you need to do on each system that you're going to be launching a game for and that is you got to choose the default retroarch core that you want it to to launch so what you do is you go into a system like here i'm in game boy and i click this little dot menu up there and then you go down here to manage system and then in here, you can see that it has a default core selected. Uh, I find that generally you can leave it on the default core. However, you will need to change it to the 64-bit version of RetroArch because that's the one that we set up exactly the way we want. You only have to do this once for each system. Once you launch it with that system and you get the core and it works fine the for the first launch, you, you'll never need to touch that again. Unless you want to, you can change uh, which core you want uh, down the road if you need to do that for some reason. So this is where you cross your fingers and hope that everything is set up correctly. Okay, so uh, there, uh, we have our Game Boy set up and ready to go. Now, uh, let's try to exit the game by using our hotkey. Uh, this will come up the first time that you exit a game. Just click on don't show again, unless you like leaving ratings for your games or whatever. So let's see if our automatic save and load works. We're going to go back into the game. Boom. That's exactly where we left it. Perfect. Uh, you can still make changes to uh, RetroArch. For example, in Game Boy here, let's say you didn't like this uh, color scheme. You wanted to mix it up. What you can do is open your menu button. For us, it's the select button and the B button down there. And then you could go down to the uh, uh, options under the quick menu here. And this is everything, all the options that are to do with this core. So you can go through here and for instance, change the uh, color palette. So here in Same Boy, they give you four different palettes to choose from. Let's go with the olive palette. Go back to our game, there you go. And if you like that, what you can do, go back into that menu, go to the bottom of the quick menu to this override section. And in here you can save the core overrides and whatever changes you made will now be applied to all the games that you load up from that core. So a Game Boy is done. Let's try another system. Let's go to Arcade. Now, like I said, uh, Final Burn Neo is the arcade ROM set that I have on here. So let's make sure that's set. Go down to Manage System. We're going to change this to Final Burn Neo. And then we've also got to make sure that it is set for the 64-bit version of RetroArch. So now when we load up a game, uh, there we go. Yep, our game is, is working just fine. All right, so that should be all we need to do for Arcade. We'll go with Game Boy Advance, I think. There we go. We'll go to Manage System. And then uh, you can always, usually you can just leave it on the default core because it automatically sel selects good cores. I don't usually change that at all, but I do need to change the RetroArch over to the 64-bit version. Yeah, it loads up, no problem. Uh, one thing that I like to do on some systems is to uh, set a, a shader. So sometimes you can apply like a CRT shader. I'll show you that in a bit. But in some systems, I prefer to have an interpolation shader. Game Boy Advance is one of those systems. I like the pixels to have a more balanced look to them because uh, I'm a kind of a pixel, a pixel purist with this system. So I'm going to open up the uh, settings. And uh, we're going to go down to the bottom of the list over to shaders. We're going to turn on the shaders. Then we're going to load. And uh, the shaders you want are in GLSL. And there's lots in here. You can see CRT in there. There is a handheld section if you want like dot matrix type display or something. Uh, for this one, we're going to go to interpolation. And uh, we're going to use the pixelate shader for this. And then uh, you can actually go right here to save. And then you can save this as a core preset. This is just a special thing that you need to do for the shaders so that it's applied to every game in this core. And for good measure, I don't know if this is necessary, but I'm still going to save the core override just to make sure. 
there. You probably can't tell on the screen, but uh, uh, these pixels just have a, a, a bit of a more accurate look to them than they did before. All right, so we're good there. We can quit out of that. All right, now I'll show you, I'll show you that uh, CRT shader. Let's do that on just good old Nintendo. We'll leave it on the default core that it has selected, but we'll change the RetroArch to the 64-bit version of RetroArch. There we go. The game loads fine, but uh, for this one, we want to apply a uh, CRT shader to make it look like an old TV. So what I'm going to do is open up the menu. We're going to go to shaders, turn that on. We're going to go down to the CRT folder. Now there's lots you can kind of experiment with and it's actually pretty fun to go through these and see what they do. Uh, the simple one that I'm going to suggest that you go with is this one here, Fake CRT Geom. And we're going to save the uh, uh, core preset for the shader. And then we're going to save the core override just for good measure. You see that? How it uh, has like a, a rounded corners and it's, it's kind of hard to see on the screen, but uh, there's uh, sort of like scan lines on there, like as if it's an old TV. That's the way I like to do that one. However, there are some systems that do not go through RetroArch. For example, GameCube. This is one that goes through uh, the standalone Dolphin emulator. So you can figure out which Dolphin emulator you like the best. Um, I like Dolphin MMJR, and I made an entire guide of Dolphin MMJR. I'll link to that in the description below. That guide was for the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, but the exact same principles apply to this one. However, just to keep things easy for the sake of this video, uh, I'm just going to use one of the Dolphin builds that they have on here. All right, so we have the regular Dolphin emulator and Dolphin for handheld, which I think is a special version of Dolphin specifically made for the Retroid products. So we'll just go with the regular Dolphin emulator today just for simplicity. But you can use any of the Dolphin builds that you uh, want, actually. So in here, we're going to uh, open up our little menu, go down to the uh, manage system, just select the regular Dolphin emulator. And for this one, you don't need to uh, select uh, the RetroArch, like I, you know, like it's it's not there because it's not RetroArch, it's just Dolphin. So let's load this up and see if it uh, starts our game for us. Hey, there we go. Now you're going to see some stuff on the screen and it's, you know, you're going to have to figure out how to set this up. And a Dolphin is one of those systems where you will need to uh, set up your controls before you get in and start uh, using the emulation. And you can just do that through the uh, main menu and you go to GameCube input and uh, choose your emulated controller and you go through and set up your keys. I'm not going to show you how to do all that. I'm not going to bother with that right now. Uh, all, all we need to know is that our games do load properly into Dolphin from Dig and you can set that up however you want. And like I said, just follow my guide if you want to know how. Next up, let's uh, check our PlayStation 2 games. So we need to find Aether SX2. Now, Aether SX2, I think, is one where we are going to need a BIOS file. Yes, we do need a BIOS file. So you're going to click that and you're going to select the BIOS file for the PlayStation 2. And you need to copy that to your SD card. I can't tell you where to find the BIOS. It's like a ROM. I'm not allowed to tell you. You need to go to Google and find it yourself. Of course, I've already found my own BIOS, so I'm just going to add that, select it, and continue on. There you go. And just like with GameCube, you just set this up how you want. Oh, look at that. Uh, Aether SX2 is not listed there. Uh, what you can do here is uh, there is the ability to uh, add your own shortcuts. If you go to edit emulators, you can create a new emulator. And uh, if it, what you need to do is figure out the values for the shortcuts. So in this situation, if you want to tinker and figure this stuff out, you're welcome to go and look uh, you know, online, see if you can find this stuff out. To be honest, if I need to play PlayStation 2, I don't have a problem just jumping over here and just playing, picking my PlayStation 2 games that way. Uh, we're just setting things up today and uh, PlayStation 2 is good to go. All right, uh, here in Dreamcast, let's uh, go into our uh, managed system. Oh, it's already set for Redream. Uh, we'll just leave it on Redream and see what happens. Hey, look at that. It, uh, it just worked. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice when that happens. So that's uh, that's it. That's how I set up my Android devices. This is how I do it. There, there's, there's not much to it. 
And uh, it's easy to do. It only takes like what, like an hour to, to do that entire thing. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, sorry, this video wasn't kind of more flashy or fun, full of fun jokes or anything like that. If you want to know more about the RP2S, make sure to check out my review of this thing linked in the description below. And of course, thank you to Go Game Geek for sending me this RP2S just specifically so I could make a guide for you guys. How cool is that? If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. Unless it's a face reveal. I'll give you that on my deathbed. So you can have that to look forward to. And on that happy note, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Well, we'll see you in the next one. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.